Hey, what's going on guys? Dope Swarner here, and this is something that um, I've been wanting to make ever since I actually built my current 3D printer, and basically that's a review, not of the 3D printer yet, it's too new and I'm still getting everything kind of dialed in and uh, calibrated correctly, but I did want to review my actual experience with the build, as this was my first 3D printer kit that I actually had to build myself, um, my other 3D printer I bought completed, and um, pretty much... I mean, I did a full board conversion on it, but I've never built from the ground up with just having all the parts and having to assemble and, um, you know, assemble the hardware and electronics and stuff like that. And we are looking at, it says this is the Fulgurtech 2020 Prusa i3. Um, and I have some definite things I really do like and some, some uh, definite things that I think that need to be worked on with this kit. And so... Uh, on a more positive note, let's go ahead and run through some of the pros of the build. Um, and now, the pros of the build, the first thing is extra parts. And that is that I am done with my build right now, and I have uh, two extra bearings, um, dozens and dozens of different size screws, pretty much. Um, I've got a couple extra uh, T-mounts, I've got a couple of extra like L-brackets, I've got a couple of extra springs, washers, um, that give you an extra... Um, end stop and I want to say maybe driver for a stepper motor that could be wrong I mean but I know there's definitely an extra end stop so um, they're definitely including extra parts which is great because you probably will lose some or uh, just need them for various things there was a couple of times with uh, when I was doing this build where I used a screw that probably wasn't the right screw size I want to say um, because they were in a metric unit and so I was using my you know American standard ruler to kind of like um, convert them from centimeters to metric but um, I'm sure I did a little bit of goofing on that so it's really nice that they do give you extras that way you don't have to worry you know when you get to the end you're like oh crap how come I don't have any more of these screws they do give you some extras so that I really do like um, the next thing which to me is a definite biggie because I have before purchasing this um, I did see a lot online about people saying that um, you know, kit has terrible instructions or instructions aren't fully there or, you know, stuff along that nature. Well, this kit has full instructions with pictures for every, pretty much every single part that you're going to be installing, which is fantastic. Definitely something that I think is necessary. Phone is going off, but something I think is necessary and, um, you know, they should have. Um, my only gripe was that I thought the pictures were kind of small. However, all I had to do was in my browser basically zoom in on the page and the pictures were big enough after that point. Um, to where you know everything was easily visible so that's probably not even on there and that's probably just my browser settings overall so that again major kudos to them for that um, I do like also that when you have set up all the hardware and you've set up all of the electronics when you go to flash the um, Arduino with the code they have the code pre pre-configured so the Marlin code is pre-configured um, you basically go to the printers like uh, install page on their website and download the uh, Marlin and flash over the firmware and it's ready to rock and roll. I really didn't have to do any any tweaking at all of settings or anything like that um, other than like flip, and, flip a motor uh, cable which was no big deal at all. That was my fault. So that was fantastic. I do like that they make that really easy for you. Um, next thing I like which I don't know if this is even necessarily them or if this is a standard across um, you know Prusa i3 style printers is that the end stops are extremely easily to adjust um, when it came to my DaVinci printer um, that I converted over and I installed mechanical end stops I had to actually um, go into the code and adjust the end stop um, settings while with this one because they are like all attached on the smooth rods you can literally just slide the physical end stop until it hits right in the right place it needs to be at and they're really easy to adjust to but then once you clamp them down they are pretty secure which is which is nice which is you know I, I really like that so that was really cool too um, another thing I liked was that I actually in the process of clamping down my Z end stop or the Z 3d printed part I overclamped it and caused it to snap, which, you know, great job, Daniel, I know. Um, and so I was looking on Thingiverse for a replacement. I couldn't find the exact replacement, and I really liked the plastic mounting mechanism they had used. So I went on their website, I went over to the, um, uh, you know, install page for this particular kit and printer, and sure enough, they have a folder that has the parts, the 3D printer parts that you can reprint out. Granted, this doesn't do you any good if this is your first 3D printer, um, you know, but because I have a second 3D printer, um, 
you know, I'm able to download the STL file and print it out and be up and running again, which is exactly what I did. I actually ended up using this printer to print out the replacement part, which kind of turned out janky because my calibration wasn't nearly done. Um, and actually, like manually, as the Z-axis was homing, clicked it with my hand to stop it right above the bed. But nonetheless, so the point I'm trying to get at is that they do have all the parts available online for you to print out, which is fantastic. Um, and lastly, I like the price. Um, I got this thing shipped to my front door for $290 and it has an aluminum frame. Um, those are just things that you cannot beat. You cannot be, it's fantastic. This thing is so solid. I absolutely love it. Um, so that's that. Now let's look at some of the things that I think could use a little bit of improvement. Um, first and foremost, you are supposed to have 18 M3 fastening nuts in your kit. I didn't get one. And so I was live streaming this build as most of you know. And when I got to the first part that needed an M3 nut, I kind of panicked. I looked everywhere and I couldn't find them. And so I basically had to run to my hardware store who didn't even have M3 fastening nuts. So I had to get regular nuts and double up on them to basically make them fasten to each other. So a little bit, uh, I guess a little bit better of, uh, I don't know, I don't want to say quality control, but just overlooking the kits a little more. And I do understand that, you know, I'm sure they're really busy and it seems like they are probably because like, uh, the way this came. I don't think they have a factory pumping these out. I think they're kind of doing most of this stuff in-house. So I understand that like this is going to happen from time to time and it's really not the end of the world. I was able to get them, but definitely something worth noting is that my kit was indeed missing uh, M3 nuts. Didn't have any of them. So um, the next thing that I ran into was when it came to assembling the uh, smooth rods and I put the bed on the smooth rods, um, the bearings were extremely rough and making like a grinding sound. And so originally in the chat, people were saying, you know, maybe it's the rods and stuff like that. And I had one person in the chat come up with this crazy idea, but I decided, heck, I got nothing to lose. Let's roll with it. And I ended up basically taking all of the uh, bearings for the printer and I literally threw them in a jar of rubbing alcohol and I let them submerge in that for, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or so. And then I took them out. And I cleaned off all of the threaded rods as well. And I actually went to my kitchen and took canola oil and put just a little bit on my finger, rubbed it on all the smooth rails, and um, just made sure there was not a lot of excess. And I also put a little bit inside of the bearings. And I put the bearings back on the rods and uh, basically slid them back and forth for a little bit to get the oil to work in. And sure enough, the bearings were fine after that. So um, I don't think this is anything they can really fix. I'm sure this is from the supplier they get their bearings from, but uh, the bearings definitely weren't like fantastic quality when I first got them and did take a little bit of work. So um, perhaps at least maybe include something in the instructions saying, I'm not telling you to tell people to use canola oil by any means, um, but I'm just saying, you know, be sure to let people know. I would say that there's a chance you may have to do a little bit of cleaning with the bearings to get them, you know, smooth and running again, because if it weren't for that guy, I honestly would have just probably emailed the company saying, hey, your bearings are defective or something like that. So I don't think that's something that everybody really knows. Um, the next thing that I had was when it came to the little acrylic piece that I, I um, uh, mount my ramps board onto uh, an Arduino there was some like pretty gnarly scratches where it basically looks like the CNC machine or whatever machine they use to drill through the acrylic had started to kind of drill um, what almost looks like a six six dot Lego piece that's pretty big uh, along with a square and then stopped and then they still use that same piece of acrylic to finish and send it to me and uh, because it's acrylic, I mean, it, you can see it from the back end, and it just looks kind of tacky. I'm really, I'm just going to throw a sticker over the back end of it to kind of um, cover that, but uh, to me, that looked a little cheap that they used that same piece of acrylic that had already been etched in, um, and along with that, too, my ramp's holes did not line up. I actually had, not even close, um, the third hole I actually had to take uh, my own personal drill and drill through, so the acrylic was definitely not super great, but in all honesty, the acrylic is not even something that they had to include. Um, they could have made you print your own mounting hardware, the hardware, excuse me, or just given it to you like that. So uh, again, I'm not like too angry or concerned about that, but definitely something worth noticing or noting. Um, and then also when it came to the grooved or threaded rod that basically lifts and lowers the Z, um, Z axis, um, on one of them, when I went to basically turn the nut onto it, um, the ends where they had cut it had such a overhang that the nut would not fit on. I literally sat here trying um, both sides for quite a while and it did not work. And so I basically had to take my Dremel with a sanding end piece and kind of 
file down on it and then it slid right on perfectly fine um which again not i don't know not the end of the world but still definitely something worth notice noting because i mean i feel like most people when they get a kit don't think they're gonna have to pull out a dremel and kind of or a drill like that and just you know put put that elbow grease or elbow grew i don't know man put some work into it like that so that was um that was really it um the only other issue I'm having, which is not really, I don't want to say it's even with the kit, but when it comes to the Z end stop, um, when it's homing, I've been having issues with it moving just by a hair, and that's causing basically my bed to come um, out of level, um, which is causing my prints to either not stick or my prints to stick too difficultly, where they're basically like bubbling. Um, so I had to kind of modify and add this piece I found online, which basically um, puts a little M4, M3 screw, so that way when the axis is coming down, just the screw hits the end stop versus the whole printed plastic piece, which I'll show you guys that more heavily in a future video. And I also do plan on um, adding auto leveling to this bed too, so hopefully that'll help with everything. Um, but other than that, like all around, I would definitely hi highly recommend this kit to a friend. Um, please don't let my you know review of this kit turn you off from it. Uh, it really is a solid kit. Um, in the end, everything is working flawlessly, and this was my first experience with a kit, so I don't know what else is really out there or what to expect. Um, so I tried my best to kind of review it fairly where I, you know, focus on the pros as well as some of the things that I think, you know, need to be noted and be, otherwise how is the company supposed to know that these things even happened if nobody talks about that or how's anyone else supposed to know, you know, what really needs to be checked out a little bit more. So uh, anyways, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video and I will do my best to place a link in the description to this kit so that way you guys can check it out for yourself. Um, and on that note, I will end the video. Dope Spawner, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Peace, guys.